When we were doing the Zoom, it was like, look, look, <laughs> Everybody was all over the place. Uh, approving minutes, number four. Move. A motion to the floater. Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Five zero vote. Citizens' comments, there are none. Approving subdivision plans, there are none. Approving certificates of compliance, there are none. Approving monthly reports from elected officials. We have a motion to take another pen, second Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Five zero vote. Approving bills for payment. Uh -huh. Second. The motion Commissioner Nelson, second Commissioner Flores, all those in favor. Uh -huh. uh, five zero vote. Auditors report. Okay. I notice we have a couple of accounts with negative balances. We do. The reserve fund is right there, mm -hmm. minus seventy-five dollars. Correct. And the law library has a negative fifteen dollars. It does. Mm -hmm. What? There's a ten thousand dollar transfer in the library fund that hasn't happened yet. That we will do the five thousand dollars. That's a timing issue. With that happens, these fees of elections you just approved, those checks will be cut, and then that will be funded to go and distribute. Seventy-five dollars. I cannot speak to that. That is the sheriff's account that's the reserve that he uses to fund his reserves. There was a uh, invoice about two years ago that came in. We need to facilitate that against this account. And there's been no revenue since then. Okay. So that's uh And then you have received the uh, 2021 tax note? You have. Are you going to break that out by categories or? Correct. It'll be broken up however you guys want. I assume the $500,000 is the most important to each precinct. We'll break that up. I know we've got the radios. We'll break that up. Um, it'll pretty much be broken up how it was before you applied for the notes. Which was half a million dollars per precinct. I think that, uh, there was uh, paving equipment, general, right? Paving equipment, and then there was dozers. The radio, the radio, radio. So I think there was there was four items, four items, and then one or two million and uh, the four precincts. The fire business was was under the tax on. Yes. So those will be reimbursed because we had already expended the funds. All you've expended so far, you haven't expended it. Is there's, there's just a PO and they are on the other are the dozers. So we'll just simply take that uh, PO and put it into that account. And yesterday I asked, and I think the dozers have been pushed back three months, but you said September, August, September? Yes, it's what we're sitting on right now. August, early September. Uh, now it's still early in the process, but it's still going to try to pick it up mm -hmm. before that. But <clears throat> and then uh, the paving equipment, there was, you're going to give me some specs so we can get them the commissioner to make sure that they're okay. What we were looking at, and I think one of them was on the spread. the same one from Cooper, from what I have to I want to have that discussion before we buy from Cooper. We've got some issues with my notes on them. So. Okay. Well, he's going to get us, uh, yesterday the discussion I had with General was that he would go ahead and provide us to see what, where we're getting it from, and then I think there was a question on the chip spread. Right? Yes, yeah. yeah. I, I didn't even know what that chip spread on. Yeah. yeah. So he'll get that to us, and, and then uh, we'll figure out how and I'll get you some stuff on the chips, but, <coughs> but I have some issues with Cooper. Cooper. Okay. And then also, and we were just going over. Uh, mm -hmm. <laughs> we were just going over the, the, the ten cents? balances. Yeah, what we can do in that ten cents is we can uh, split it up five ways and put two cents in each capital account. <laughs> if you guys would like. Okay, all right. Yeah, we'll take care of that. So we clean it. We'll get the final one of that. Yeah. All right. And then the other one, uh, we still have money in the SL79. Yeah, and we're going to do an overlay on that piece of SL79. So we don't use for that. On the one going towards uh, the piece that when they... No, 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 no. When we did the, this was for the piece that when we extended SL79 over 90 to tie it in Los Brisas, when we did that original project, we didn't have the money for the contractor to do the overlay, so we're going to go back and do the overlay on that piece. So it'll take pretty much all of that. Okay. How much money we got left? No, $78,000? Like 76 Yeah. Yeah. And then 
They were two or three other ones. Lot, the library also, there's still a lot of money. There's still uh, money in that library account. I mean, nothing just goes pending, but if we could clean that up, it would be good. Auditor's report. Uh, motion to approve. Second. A motion, Commissioner Middleton. Second, Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? Five zero vote. Budget, budget adjustments from the Bay Appropriations, to the five thousand increasing to travel budget. The last time we did this, uh, and Commissioner Middleton, you did it and came out of your own budget. Where did you want the money, Commissioner uh, Vasquez? Uh, from operations, uh, transferred over there. Okay. Is that a motion? Motion. Second. A motion, Commissioner Flotis. Second, I mean. Motion, Commissioner Flores, Second, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 5 0 vote. Transfer 3,000 to Precinct 1 travel budget. From the operating, make a motion. Second. Second. We have a motion, Commissioner Wardlaw. Second, Commissioner Nettleton. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. 5 0 vote. <coughs> Treasurer's report. Is this the room? Mm -hmm. No, uh, we're good. Aye. Aye. Next time. Discussing matters covered, you can call in around 9.15 for about my week. We're going to come back to that at 9.15. Uh, discussion on the immigrants. Uh, they did have a wreath of this uh, was donated to them. They have, they've been having problems with it. Uh, the court, two meetings, three, three meetings ago, has come up and <clears throat> allowed us to use uh, diesel to provide diesel and propane. Uh, we're probably going to need to come up with a better plan. Because uh, this one commissioner has been providing the diesel, so we'll set up some money for that one uh, on the next meeting and, and do that one. Uh, just, sir? We, we have the, oh, no, we have just a discussion on it. Yeah. Um, I have some questions on this. Okay. The, uh, so the sheriff's not here, but, but the cost as of today that we have expended because of the immigration issue with DPS working that. What is that number? Do we know? I had a number of 70 something hundred or something. Uh, first in 10 days, uh, last week when we got the phone call from the sheriff, in 10 days it had already cost us $7,000 and I think that he was on the phone call with you that day. Uh, so we had gone over our, at that point, instead of being at 110, we were like at 132 beds. 130 beds uh, that one day that the sheriff called. But <clears throat> in 10 days, we'd already accumulated $7,000 of what extra cost it was going to be. Uh, I asked the sheriff right after we got off the phone call to start keeping track of that, start keeping track of his overtime because we might be able to get some of that money reimbursed, especially since he had a day, well, he's had several days, but he, the one day that we were talking about, 75% uh, of his time, uh, the deputies out in the field, I'm sorry, for answering this, but 75 percent <laughs> of the time that his deputies spent uh, this one day was attributed to immigrants. Uh, and he's had days that, that we've gone over that, but the day that we were speaking, uh, you know, and, and it was one of those deals, I think, uh, one deputy down on the river uh, before anybody got there uh, it, it spent a couple hours. I mean, I guess the norm's at least an hour. And, and yeah, no more folks have to do with this. Uh, they have a place, uh, Border Law, is that right? Correct, yes. Uh, so basically, when you Google when you Google it, uh, Google Earth, and you look down on it, you can literally see the, the gravel bar that, that goes through the water. Mm -hmm. So they're, they're in about six, eight inches of water. Uh, and he was doing an interview the other day, and while he was <laughs> doing an interview, he walked up on it and walked behind it. Uh, so the cost, uh, we asked for them, for the sheriff's office to track the cost. And that way we can go, we can go back over it, and then they can come back to the court also. So uh, the, the public needs to understand that, that <clears throat> this is great that the state is stepping up and trying to do something, but it, it it's at the back of the local taxpayers that's picking up the tab for this. Yes. In our jails, in our court systems, we're not reimbursed by the state of Texas. We're not paid back by them for these actions. Um, and, and when 
the federal government fails to do their part, which is their responsibility, and the state or the locals have to pick up the difference, it comes out of the cost of the local taxpayers. And it's $7,500 every 10 or 15 days or 30 days. It's going to get real expensive real quick. Yes, that's probably a pretty good average for every 10 days you're taking. And so <laughs> on average, we're spending, on average, at least 50% of the man hours are taken care of. They might come across waiting for Border Patrol to show up. What is, when, when, when y'all find them and you call Border Patrol and they pick them up, now what is the deal with DPS when they find them? DPS has to hold on to them until Border Patrol comes to them. Whenever they're, and they arrest somebody or they find them, they are the ones that are responsible for them, and they have to wait for Border Patrol. Because what DPS does not enforce that immigration law that we don't. So, so when they, they find them, they arrest them, they throw them in jail, and then they turn them over to No, no. So then what is Illegals, they do not. The drivers, if they're U.S. citizens, because... Okay. Uh, so the car is... They're the ones in most of the chases. They have a lot of chases, but Highway Patrol has the most chases. The when they run from them, they will arrest the drivers and... Anybody that they can prove is a U.S. citizen that was part of the smuggling organization. They go to jail. The rest of them get put or given over to Border Patrol. Border Patrol does the same thing for them that they do for us. They have to hold them there until Border Patrol shows up and gets them up. And the problem we're having right now is that <coughs> if you're, correct me if I'm wrong, uh, and I just wrote it down later, OTM, other than Mexican, you're probably going to be taken somewhere else. Correct. If you're Mexican, we're going to do Federal government can do their best to get you back across the They're going to take you back to the bridge. Uh, so the problem that we're having with the chases is, is that because if you're Mexican, uh, you're going to be sent back. Mm -hmm. So therefore, now you're having more illegals coming across that are Mexicans that are paying to get smuggled out, and that's where uh, the process is coming in, where it's costing us a lot of money for the simple reason that those individuals that we're catching are going into our jail, as far as the drivers and the people doing yes, the smuggling. Yes, that's correct. Right. And I think uh, you're full, if I'm not mistaken, uh, your lot. Just be, I mean, it's, it's, it's becoming a more and more problem. Chief, what is the end result on these coyotes? What, <coughs> say they arrest them, and then they take them to court, and then... You arrest them, them, you take them to, put them in jail, get them arraigned, they post a bond, they get out, and then it's up to the courts when they have time to put them on the docket. They and they get out and they come back. Correct. Right. It's, as Mr. Middleton said, the OTMs get a piece of paper and get to go away. The Mexicans come across, they go back, and tomorrow we get them again, and the next day we get them again. Yeah. It's just a revolving door because they, can't, they keep coming back until they make it through. Thank you. Thank you. And then again, uh, we've asked for them to keep track of it. I think Sheriff already talked to Matt and we're always uh, seeing how much money was costing us already because of the amount of prisoners that we have in our jail. Uh, the last, that one day the Sheriff had called me, he just got on the phone with you and said that y'all had come up with a price and, like I said, in the first, in, in those 10 days, already a little over $7,000. So, any other discussion? Dr. Palau? Yes. Here. Dr. Palau, can you hear us? She's pretending to be there. <laughs> she just joined. Okay. You send her a text order? Yes, sir. Okay. When she comes back on, we'll go to her. Uh, discussion of hospital action on resolution of support for mental health facilities and housing. Motion to approve. Second. Motion for Mr. Nelson, second Mr. Flores, all those in favor? Aye. Five zero vote. Discussion possible action on asking the city <coughs> for the use of the Paul Pope uh, theater for jury selection. <coughs> we're going to ask for it to be we're, we're given to it. Ask for it to be donated, and then I've got another item in case they don't, don't donate it. We'll have to set some money aside. That way we're just prepared for it. But right now I'm asking the court to give us permission so we can go ahead and ask them to, for it to be donated. It's because we don't have room. The amount of room that we have at the 83rd, 63rd, or even here, when you do the social distancing, uh, you're going to be sitting 20 people, 22 people. Uh, we figured that if we went to the Paul Polk, the amount of room we do the social distancing, we could use the bottom and the, 
uh, document and get more people in there to sit. And hopefully we'll be able to get enough people in there so we can set not just one jury, but set multiple <coughs> jury. So this, if we have to pay for it, would be able to come out of COVID funding? Uh, if we'll do one item, then we'll jump to the other one. Yes. Okay. Motion to approve. Authorize the judge to request the okay. use of the public too. I have a motion from Mr. Nelson. Second. Mr. Second. Yes. Yes. Commissioner Flores, I'm sorry. All those in favor? Five zero vote. Item 17, discuss possible action to set aside uh, money for the Paul Pope, the days that uh, that he wants them, which would be a Monday, to, uh, every Monday of the week from now until, I guess, Christmas type deal, yeah, uh, which would be about a little over, uh, I'd say, $6,500. Should I make a motion to authorize the, to, to authorize the expenditure out of... COVID, um, we should have some funds other than the 200000 we set aside for COVID, for, so out of COVID federal funds. 6500 That's what the number you gave me. Yes, sir. Uh -huh. A motion, Commissioner Nelson. Second. Second, Commissioner. Second. Vasquez, all those in favor? All right. Uh -huh. Five zero vote. Discussion possible action. Item number 18, discussion possible action. Giving permission to AEP to store equipment at Valverde County Fairgrounds in case of an emergency. These are just uh, the staging area that they would be. Motion. Second. <coughs> have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Wardlaw. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Zero vote. Dr. Palau, are you there? Hello. <laughs> Dr. Palau? Okay, we'll keep going. Uh, discussion possible, item 19, discussion possible action, let's see Ranch, if we can table this and come back after executive motion session. Motion to table. Second. Have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton, second, Commissioner Flotis, all those in favor? 5-0 vote. <laughs> Are you texting her? <laughs> okay. Discuss, item 19, discuss possible action on property taxes for housing authority. This one here, I'm getting a little bit of a heartburn on, and I don't know what it is that we can do or can't do. But they've got a lot of property all over. Valverde County, and they continue to buy property, and we don't get anything. They used to give us a, a, um, a set amount. Yeah, in legal in authority. authority. Mm -hmm. Unfortunately, I don't think we have any legal authority to. <clears throat> we can't tax them, and I don't think we have any legal authority to stop their projects. But I mean, you're, I you're absolutely right because it equates to. If you add up all the property and what the value is and the taxes, it's, it's a lot of money. And, and I'm not too concerned about property that they're that they're using for for housing, uh, the actual housing or for their offices. I'm just concerned about the massive amount of property that they have that nothing's being done with, and they continue to buy more property. For example, they bought a little pie shake deal next to the bowling alley. What are they gonna do with it? So they just took a couple hundred thousand dollars off the tax bill that none of the entities can collect the tax on until they figure out what the hell they're going to do with it. I go in again. We can't do nothing really about it. I just wanted to aggravate a little bit because it's, you, you drive down the highway uh, where they used to have the mobile homes. I think one of them is I, what I got from them was six hundred and some odd thousand dollars. So again, that property is spending six hundred and some odd thousand dollars. The city, the school, the hospital, the county, nobody's collecting a tax on them. They're just sitting there. So, again, uh, you know, just bring it up to their attention and bring it up to everybody else's attention. But, uh, this is, you know, we had some of these million, these properties that were millions of dollars of property, maybe, uh, we could either go do more or even lower the tax rate. So, again, it's just, it's been an issue for many years with the, the, the volume of property they have. I remember we, the cities had these discussions, the counties had these discussions. It, it equates to several million dollars a year in, in non-taxable property. And I don't, I agree with you, it, it, it's starting to become a, a burden on, on the rest of the taxpayers. Yeah, well, you know, I just, I just thought, you know, if we sort of put it out there, maybe they, uh, maybe we'd light a fire. Either way. Item 21, discussion possible action on a project that may be submitted to Tony Gonzalez for funding. Uh, we had, uh, these are what they used to call earmarks. Uh, they do want something by the 15th. 
Uh, we had sent out an email as soon as we got it, which was a week, week and a half ago. But there, one of the things that they're asking for support right now is for dorms uh, out at the out at the base, if we could maybe uh, submit some letters of support for that. And if we have anything that, you know, that y'all could think of, uh, one of the item 15, which was a deal in the boundary, that facility is a 19 to $21 million facility. Uh, there's probably going to be a little over uh, 20 counties that will submit letters of support for that one uh, and try to get that one on there. Uh, our representative or, or Mr. Gonzalez can only, I think that everybody's allowed 10 uh, projects that they can submit. <clears throat> so I don't know what else y'all would have. Like I say, the dorm, we'll get a letter, support, you know, if y'all don't mind, we'll do a letter of support for them. Mm -hmm. And then uh, the other one that we had was the mental health uh, facility in Uvalde. Uh, we, uh, I guess one of the other things, and some of the money that we're going to be getting in uh, I think the conversation I had with Matt was that on broadband, on, on maybe we're waiting on some more details on what we're going to be able to do with that money, right? Which is a, di a different set of funds, but they're, they're they're trying to get us more funds. So. That's out of that 9.5 million. Yes, sir. This one here is is different, but it's I think if we if we miss a deadline on this one, hopefully with what they're going to open up for us on that one, we'll have an opportunity maybe take care of some radios or something on that one. But we also, I mean, we need some infrastructure project, roads, highways, um, stuff like that that is going to enhance the community. I mean, I'd like to see the extension of Amistad Boulevard out to the lake. I mean, Kingsway back out to the loop. I mean, there's several bigger you know, and, and projects that need to be looked at. And this one here, uh, we talked about putting a, a committee together of trying to come up with ideas and then bring it back to the court. Uh, are we allowed to can we, go to with this action, with this, it says discussion and possible action on projects that may be submitted to Representative Tony Gonzalez for funding. Could we create a committee under that one? Or it's not broad enough. Okay. Mm -hmm. Oh. No, absolutely. Yeah, that's broad enough. Uh, I, I think we could create a committee and that way we could sort of do this one and do the other. No, I agree. We, we need to start looking at there's there's discussion in Washington about an infrastructure bill to do infrastructure funding, and we're going to need some some kind of shelf ready projects and things like that lined out for those types of deals. So uh, I'll make a motion that we create a committee. Who do we want on it? Tom, um, Matt, Douglas, and then a couple of commissioners, I would think. I'd like to be on the two. Okay. Uh, let me do this. I'm going to make a motion that, uh, if you don't mind, I'll withdraw. Do what, ma'am? Uh, he had a motion on the floor. Uh, I'll withdraw my motion. Okay. Okay. I'll make a motion that Tom, that Tom Matt, Douglas, Commissioner Vasquez, and Commissioner Nelson be on this committee uh, to come up with projects and uh, we'll just go from there. Second. Uh, motion myself. Uh, second, Commissioner Nettleton. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero vote. <laughs> she owns it. Yes, I won't. Yes. Yes. You what? Yes. Uh, yes. Is she on? Doc? Yes, I'm here. Okay, well, we're going to go to you now, okay? Let me just read the agenda item and go back to it. Okay. Go back to item 13, discussion matters related to COVID-19. Uh, Dr. Fala, we had a conversation this morning, uh, and uh, if you can go over with us, maybe some of the clinics that we're going to be doing uh, in the next week or so, and the one that was canceled, if you don't mind. The floor is yours, Doc. Yes. Yeah. Okay, so um, the CDC and the FDA are kind of putting a pause on the Johnson & Johnson administration uh, due to fixed cases of uh, rare and severe blood clots. So the clinic we have planned for Wednesday is going to be postponed until further notice. Um, the next clinic after that would be on Friday the 16th. We're going to have a second dose Moderna with the National Guard. These individuals got their first dose on the 19th. And then on the 17th, we will have a first dose Pfizer. Uh, I just opened the link maybe an hour ago, but I'm 
planning to share it with the school district so that the high school students that are 16 years and, and older can register and get their shot there. Uh, it's going to be a morning clinic like we did before. So hopefully we can fill in the 1,070 vaccines we have. If we see that we have a lot of um, interest, we can just up the doses uh, as we have a lot in storage right now. We have uh, to say something. <laughs> <laughs> we have we have over five thousand. Is that correct? Yeah, we have fifty-six hundred. Yeah. Are we having a problem in trying to get people to get vaccinated? Or? Yes, we have been having trouble reaching out to people. Uh, we are losing the demand that we saw at the beginning. Um, for example, last weekend we were supposed to give two thousand Johnson and Johnson, and only a thousand showed up. So that's why we were planning to do the 1,000 Johnson Johnson this week. What is our percentage of vaccination? Fully vaccinated. I think it uh, haven't looked at the updated 22? numbers, but last time it was 20 something percent. 22, 22 percent. And then when you include that with people that have already had COVID, are we getting close to some sort of herd immunity? <laughs> uh, uh, go ahead, Doc. I'm sorry. I think we're not there yet. So herd immunity is supposed to be around 80%. Um, I think there's still some people that uh, they don't want to get the vaccine. Uh, cases are down, so they don't, I don't know, I don't think there's a point to it. Um, and I think there's some people still that we haven't been able to reach. You know, people that don't have Facebook, uh, that don't listen to the radio, um, they're not aware of of public figures here in the Rio. So then we still have a lot of work to do to promote vaccinations. And uh, well, there has been kind of a hint of a, another wave coming. So it would be good that we can uh, finish our, our allocations at least. If you take the 7,823 the 7, uh, and uh, and you do the percentage uh, and add it to the 22, we're somewhere around at 30, 37%, something like that. So we're still quite a ways from that. And depending on who you're listening to, I think the governor, I think some of his staff said somewhere in the 70% range. Oh, yeah. And then you have everybody else that's somewhere in that 85 to 95%, 80 to, 80 to 95% range. So there's like different stories of what is considered uh, herd immunity. The and, and I don't get it uh, how we add in the people that are pot that tested positive but still don't have a vaccine because I was talking to a guy last night that he's had it three times and this time he's uh, he's really definitely sick. I mean he's I mean he's yeah this is his third time and uh, he says I need to stay away from Crystal City. <laughs> <laughs> And I'm sorry, I didn't mean to throw off to Crystal City, but that's what he said. <laughs> Doc, uh, do you have anything else for us? I mean, I guess the whole thing is right now, and I know that uh, everybody's been trying to push the word out, uh, but we need to have, I think you said 1,700 vaccines on Saturday, so we need to get the word out for, you know, a couple of thousand people to get the vaccine. Can we use that city's reverse calling system we have? They, they've been we texting and everything. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they've already been texting that, and they've also have that. We paid for some of that system, also the county did, uh, so they can go in. Rowan, come on up. We ain't seen you in a while. <laughs> Ever since you got a haircut. Yeah, you get a hit. Finally found the barber. <laughs> <laughs> a whole year. You've been a year without a haircut. <laughs> Good morning, guys, commissioners. Um, yeah, we've been using the system. It's been mostly through the text messaging system, which is the alert sense. However, uh, the calls also go out. I know Judge Owen was on the sample call, and so we, we, we've done, uh, I mean, we've done all emails, text messages. And a lot of it is you have other clinics giving doses out. UMC is given a large chunk, and so a lot of those individuals who were signed up with us um, have, have uh, gotten it elsewhere. So, the, uh, Are we expecting, uh, I keep seeing things that they're going to, move the age limit down or asking the authority to move it down to 12 or something like that? Are we expecting that to happen? 
there have been research uh, with the Pfizer vaccine of dropping the age, and the research has shown a very promising results with kids, saying that kids uh, from 12 to 15 years old uh, that get the Pfizer have 100% uh, effectiveness compared to 95% of with the adults, but it's all still in, in research phase yet. So and trials. they haven't. They haven't. They haven't asked for emergency authorization yet. No, not point. yet. Where are we at on on kind of the school district and the teachers and all that? Are we pretty close to having everybody? I think wants one. I mean, the uh, the doctor Rios two weeks ago or last week, whenever he was standing in line, uh, I think they were at seventy percent with the with the staff. Uh, so they were they were on up there. The the kids uh, that's another you know that's, that, that, that's that's a whole different story. But they are uh, they are asking you know for them to get vaccinated and, and they're going to open it up even more uh, to try to cater to them. Yeah, I know our uh, our oldest uh, 16 year old she went and got her mm -hmm. her uh, Pfizer two weeks ago, whenever it was, her first shot. Um, I'm hoping we can get that dealt with so that we can actually open schools next year. Oh, come on. You don't want them at the house? No. Uh, <laughs> uh, absolutely. Are, are we doing okay with staffing and stuff like that, Doctor? I know we've moved a lot of the staffing for the we moved money contact in. tracing over to do, deal with this. So. And uh, last week, uh, paperwork was done to hire uh, some part-timers, uh, I think 25? Yes, sir. We've got about six already that have fulfilled their requirements, our signed documentation, and we'll have another three. So, I mean, I think after this week, we'll have 10 fully hired. There was 25 names. 25 names mm -hmm. submitted. Uh, of course, you know, some of them had to work some things out with their current employer, but I uh, had the documentation now. I'll be uh, taking it up to Juanita here after this meeting. So the one that we had hired for the contact tracing, a bunch of them are still, I mean, today's number, I was looking at today's numbers, I mean, right now we have, again, it's dropped. So not only has the county uh, been using a lot of our contact tracers over at the Civic Center uh, and doing other jobs, so is the city. Uh, so their contact tracers are over there helping too. A bunch of that is with uh, traffic control. Uh, type deal, uh, and then inside also if they have questions, you know, we're, we're able to answer. Them. So by the time we probably with registration because they know the system already, so they're pretty good with that. Yeah, I gotta say it's very impressive. I've been through it, and uh, y'all have done a phenomenal job of how quickly you get people in and out, and, and the system you have. So y'all done a really great job. With that. Yeah. She is, uh, she's something else. Did I say that out loud? <laughs> <laughs> no, but Dr. Palau and Roland and John have done a really good job. Uh, you know, everybody sort of has, has a piece to, to put in this puzzle and, and it, it works. Uh, I will tell you the other day that, you know, I told the city manager when we were sitting up at, at the meeting, uh, I've been impressed. You know, people, you know, it's, it's at the beginning you have people and, and we were getting complaints, and I'm trying to keep this short, but we were getting, we were getting people that, that had weighed in a long time line, either with ours at the very beginning or with UNC. The problem is that you show up two and a half hours early to your appointment, and it just backs the hell out of everything. So, I mean, you know, I, I had people on, on Friday, at, you know, at, well, at the Civic Center at the beginning, it's at 7 o'clock, they were in line uh, for a 9 o'clock appointment. You know, I've been waiting here two hours. Sure, your point is not until now. I mean, you know, come on, people. UNC was the same way. And I had, you know, I had one guy call and he said, well, you know, tengo dos horas y media aquí. Well, yeah, but you, your point wasn't until 11 and you're getting out at 10 o'clock, you know, but you were there two and a half hours early, you know, from when you got out, not even when your, when your appointment was. So, I'm getting back to what I was going to say before that just took off. Uh, it's been impressive to watch uh, the police and the firemen and, and everybody else that, that's working because you have people that are mad. I mean, you know, they just, they, you know, they just, you know, you, 
you you know if you fed them ice cream and, and cokes, they, they they'd still be mad. But these individuals that are dealing with them, uh, you know, good morning, they have a good day, you know, uh, it's going to take you 50, but telling them what to do, and it's amazing to see that attitude change because of the response of these individuals that are helping and, and their professionalism. Uh, I mean, it's just, it, it's, it's been unbelievable. Uh, you know, I, I, I can't say enough about, uh, like I say, the firemen, the policemen, everybody that's volunteering. Uh, the nurses from the, the college, the nurses from the hospital, the nurses from the school district, and the National Guard, the National Guard. Uh, they come in. I mean, they're very, very, very professional. And you get every now and then uh, the people that's want, wanting the vaccine that, Jesus Christ, you want to throw a chair at them. Uh, you know, but, but these people that are the volunteers, they, they continue to be professional. They, they continue to... You know, and again, you don't get many, but you do get every now and then that one, that, uh, you know, grabs and screams. But the, the level of professionalism that these people uh, show every day is, is, is unbelievable. But, uh, either way. Mr. Dr. Lara or, or Judge, did you uh, want to talk about uh, homebound, Dr. Lara, with the National yes. Guard? Okay. The homebound, uh, we have done, I think, uh, two clinics already in one day, and we're having another one this Friday, a small one with the National Guard. Usually they had instructions that they should do Johnson & Johnson homebound. Um, I think the instruction was from since last week, so I think that would be paused for a while. But we still have registrations open, and people are still signing in to receive a homebound vaccination. Um, so we it's going to be in the future to talk to them to see when and, and which vaccine. <clears throat> right now, everybody is kind of uh, wrapping up their second doses, so that's why we haven't set up a new a new clinic, but probably at the end of April or beginning of, of May. Okay. Just, uh, Doc, do you have anything else for us? Just one little thing. I think there's been some information saying that the vaccine kind of uh, stops long haul effects of people who had COVID. I think these people that have like, can't, still have headaches, still have some shortness of breath, they say that getting after two doses of the vaccine, those effects kind of stop. So I, that also helps promote the vaccine so that people who had COVID can actually get the vaccine, uh, see some benefits from it. I have a friend of mine whose wife got it, and she had a lot of effects after. And after she got the vaccine, they seemed to have all cleared up. So it seemed to have worked for her. Yes, exactly. And one, one more question. The, the, from the, when can you get a vaccine after? Because I know the rules have changed. It's 90 days, 60 days, 30 days uh, from after you were cleared. Uh, after you had COVID, you go get the vaccine. What is what is today's ruling on when you can get the vaccine after you get COVID and cleared? So right now the the ruling is that if you get COVID uh, and you feel you already made your quarantine and you feel completely <clears throat> recovered, you don't have fatigue anymore, you don't have cough, you can get the vaccine without issues. Uh, that that's the only recommendation now. We don't have to wait 30 days or 90 days anymore. Okay, basically no symptoms. Yes, correct. Okay. Folks, y'all have anything else for Dr. Pella? No. <clears throat> We're all good. Thank you, Doctor. Thank you so much. Have a good day. You too. Bye bye. Uh, item 22, we put this on uh, just to see where we're at. Discussion possible action on certificate of obligation tax note. Tax note, we've already uh, we covered that on the under the auditor's report. Uh, certificate of obligation, we're moving forward with that, with the numbers that we have, so everything's good. Do you all have any other questions on that? We're good. Not good enough. We're good. Hey guys, no, there's no question. Um, but there is on 17. Um, on that, that's COVID funding, the 16. Okay, let's, uh, nope. We don't have any questions on 21. Move back to item 17, discussion possible action to set aside money for Paul Polk Theater out of COVID money. What, what COVID money are we talking about? The 200,000 that we've set aside. Okay. Okay. 
That'll work? That'll work, yes. Okay. good? That's great. Thank you. Thank you. Item 23. You know what? Good. Yeah, I say a question on that. Yeah, yeah. Yes. <laughs> Go ahead. Okay. Um, are you going to get with the city and see if we can get uh, that uh, donated or if we have to pay, right? Yeah. Yeah, what we'll do is uh, we'll get with Lena. And you said that he has some forms to fill out? Yes. And we'll fill out the forms to ask him to donate it first. And then it's just, <clears throat> and then we'll come up with an agreement for six months or whatever it is, right? Yeah. That works? Yeah. And you'd already talked to Lino, so yes. if you want to get the paperwork, to get, it, get it going. Okay. All right. Item 23, authorizing Sheriff Joe Frank Martinez to pay Vigilant Solutions annual subscription renewal fee period to May 2021, April 2022, in the amount of $2,537.50 from account 1111-1221-33-16600 operating supplies line item. Motion to approve. Second. What is this? I have a motion, Commissioner uh, Flores, second, Commissioner Vasquez. What exactly is this? Okay. I'm explain it better than I can. This is a data plan that ties all the OPRs that are licensed by vigilant to talk to each other. Uh, right now, all the counties in Stone Garden, all of those OPRs are part of vigilant. They can query ours to see if my vehicle came through they're looking for an investigation we can do theirs it also allows you all the civilian people trucking companies record companies repo companies that have the lpr systems on theirs you get to query theirs also if you're looking for a vehicle you want to and that's how much they can explain it better than i can yes you can just and it didn't we were in the process of changing. We had cap fleet, not cap fleet, uh, cop fleet cameras to start with. We swapped over during the middle of it. And in that grant, we didn't put it in there. It's in the next one. Uh, and the original swap over, it was all included in there after the first year you had to pay it. So it was not added in there the first time. So we'll be able to do it next time. Yes. LPR. Yes. That's a plate reader. This is the one where everybody knows where you're at all the time. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the square thing on the truck. Yeah. 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 camera they cut down your duck pond, right? Correct. We have five cameras. One in the duck pond, one in the pontoon. Uh, we have an LPR trailer which has two cameras on it, and we have one on the car. Does your system talk with the system that Customs and Immigration have at all the checkpoints? Yes. They're part of Vigilant also. Any other questions? <laughs> I have a motion, Commissioner Flores, and Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. 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 In court to name a county designee and a county point of contact. I will make a motion to approve, and the county designee and point of contact will be the county judge. Second. Or his designee. Second, I check. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton. Second, Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Five zero vote. <coughs> We're too good. So. <laughs> Item 24, authorization to paint the ceiling on the third floor of the judicial courthouse is to be presented to Commissioner Schwartz, who will submit funds to the Broadway Courthouse Improvements Budget. There was three bids submitted. The uh, question on one of them was, and I think the 4200 versus the 6200 was how, how they'd be paid. They didn't want to wait. So I guess it's between the 42 and the 62, but just how are we going to pay the 42 if that's what the court wants to do? They want to be paid upon completion? Yes, sir. Yes. Or well, I want to make a motion. Uh, well, uh, I will say this. I went back to them because it's been a while since we got these bids. He hasn't responded uh, anymore. He didn't really look like he wanted the job. He does want a weekly draw, so I asked him how long it would take. He said one week. So, um, 
So yeah, there's there's that, and I'm not sure how. I guess a, I guess a check would be put the, the day he's. Well, if the court yeah. authorizes the expenditure and the draw, then that would be considered the ability to issue a check. You have to approve a claim from the auditor's office. This is the claim. That is not the claim. That is not the claim from the bank. Then we'll go back to bills to be paid and have this in. And, and that not the, but that's not the claim, Commissioner. The agenda item is not a claim. Right? Yeah, it is. If the court authorizes it, then it is. No, it isn't. If we authorize the expenditure based off of this bid mm -hmm. and authorize it to be paid at completion, it's the same thing. We'll, we'll disagree on that. We will get further guidance. That's what he just And we'll find out if the agenda item is a claim. Second, Commissioner. Okay, so can we go ahead? First, let's take it by steps. Do we want which bid? Which bid do we want? To well, I mean, I want to go with the cheaper bid, but you're saying now you don't know if they want the job. So, I don't well, yes, we, we want to go with the cheaper bid, but he, uh, they can't. They, they don't agree with our terms of payment, which I ask every vendor. Do you agree with our terms? It, it goes from this dollar amount to from that to even you know those on our bids. It explains. Do you agree to our terms of payment? And this guy cannot agree. He may maybe doesn't have the capital to uh, front that money to be able to wait for payment. For which it's we say that 30 terms, but when you went out for bids, did you list the terms? This is an informal bid, so whenever we call them, okay. we, we we ask them, which is why. Uh, so the first one was was done was by Edgar at Arkwright, at Arkwright. so we had to call them. They agreed. We called MD Payting, same thing. So yes, to answer your question. We do, and then that's how we know he doesn't. Uh, he doesn't. He doesn't agree to our plan. Maybe do a motion to. What is the bid for Mark? I can't read. I can't read. It's nine thousand. Nine thousand. Yeah, okay. that was that okay. was done by Edgar, and Edgar walked through with all three vendors to. Uh, and I think even there was a, a question about which they were bidding on the same thing. He went through the. With the yeah, we, we we went around a second time after the last court to make sure because these price differences are are pretty. You know, you go from nine thousand to four thousand on the same job. It's, no, 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 I understand. I just don't want to spend $2,000 if I don't want to spend $2,000. Okay. Thank you. 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 Could we make the motion to accept the first bid and then if for some reason he backs out, go to the second bid? Well, we can if Matt's not going to pay it based off the court order. If, uh, it sounds if they like schedule, he's going to refuse to pay it. If they schedule, let's I'm do not this. Gonna refuse, I'm not going to refuse to pay it. I will forward the claim to you and give you the authorization to pay it. But if the claim does not come to you from the owner's office, it cannot be paid. Okay, so if we if, understand that, right? If uh, we accept the first bid, do the 42, mm -hmm. and then he says he wants the job. If we okay. scheduled it to where he would get done the week before we actually have the court, then it wouldn't be a problem. If he turned in his invoice on Friday, or that would not be enough time to get it paid on the next week. Thursday, the next Thursday. Mm -hmm. So if he then if he, paid on Tuesday. Okay. So could we schedule that? And, and if, we, if we accepted the 4200 and explain how we're going to work it, so he, and he says, I, I don't want to do it at all. I've already explained that to him. So I say net 30 turns to our vendors, but I also tell them we do process our checks every two weeks. Mm -hmm. And if you do turn in on the Wednesday before court, before noon, before they come on Thursday, it'll, well, yes, Thursday. Okay. Um, but I like to say Wednesday because the department head still has to sign. But right now he said Thursday, Thursday, so if we could get it in by Thursday. Okay. Yeah, I, 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 it is Wednesday. We've given the guy a break because we want to get it done. Okay. So we go That's what I'm saying. So if we could get it by Thursday. So, like I said, we'll do that. I explained that to him already, to Jones. And what he say? And he says, I don't have time to wait for you. So, you know, I try to work with these vendors. And then I also offered, because it's only $4,200, that I have a purchasing card. Well, it seems seem like we're sitting here going to beat each other up over something. Well, no, so I'm waiting. I was, I was trying to. Wait a minute. Yes. Okay. Please. We're sitting, sitting here going to beat each other up over something that this guy might not even. Exactly. I was going to throw out the F word, but what I do anyway. Right? So, I mean, I don't make him. If he's not wanting to do it, I mean, we're well, sitting here. Gonna, sir? Well, real life, he underbid the job. He might have. But, uh, but again, we're going to sit there and beat the hell out of each other over something that, you know, I'm going to take my can of gas for something else. 
Okay. Thank you. I will make a motion that we authorize the 4200 on the terms laid out by Guillermo, and if he refuses to move forward with the other bid of $6,200. Second. I have a motion of Commissioner Nettleton, second Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? All right. You okay with that? Yes, sir. Thank you. Item 25, awards to the lowest and best bid 21-03 mid-size sport vehicle, utility vehicle, capital expenses with available funds in the BPU grant for the district defense office. Thank you. Thank you. This is outside the, the deal we're doing with the uh, enterprise. Yes. This is coming out of her, her BPU grant for the district attorney. We received four bids. Uh, Grapevine, Grand Country Del Rio, Cecil Atkinson Cecil Ford, John Jones Auto Group. Um, Grapevine and Rand Country did not submit all paperwork, so they're not considered. Cecil Atkinson Ford. What do you mean they did not submit all paperwork? Uh, they didn't submit their W-9 or warranty information, which is uh, explicitly listed on the bid to submit those to be considered. So for this bid... Uh, is there a specific warranty that we have to have, or just a I, warranty I, they do provide? A uh, warranty that they do provide, yes. And what was the other one? Their W-9. We have... I hate to see us go somewhere else over. Not by local. Cecil Atkinson Ford is in Del Rio. Yeah, but they're still not the cheapest. Yeah, um, now you can reject all, and we can, uh, since it's under 50, uh, we can get three, three quotes and go get So we're missing else. a... W-9 and warranty. W-9 and warranty. From Rand Country and W-9 from Grapevine. And that was in the, the bid set? That is in the bid, yes. Listed out explicitly saying you have to submit those to be considered. That is a... To be considered to, to be... So this is for the DA though? Yes. What does the DA want? She wants a Dodge Durango. She's, but we, on the bid we put Dodge Durango or equivalent to keep it fair and competitive. For everybody. What's he the paperwork that's missing? A W-9 and a warranty. Uh, he, it's right he did mention, given what did mention, and I think that's what's on the table. Uh, we can reject them all, and then we can, we can go back and get some bids and bring them back to the court again. I mm -hmm. think that would be the thing to do. Motion to reject. Second. And to rebid. I have a motion. Uh, Commissioner Nettleton. I have a second. Commissioner Flotis. All those in favor? All right. Nine right. zero vote. Thank you. Thank you, guys. Uh, item 26, discussion possible action on county to send a letter to respond conditional letter of map revision request for the city of Del Rio by elite engineers. Uh, yes, good morning, Judge Commander morning. Commissioners. I have a little presentation. Uh, I did uh, 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 Can you put on the <laughs> Okay, so the, the city of the Rio received a conditional letter of map revision request. This is basically a, a request to amend the FEMA map based on certain conditions or improvements. We receive a copy of that application because we are the point of contact from FEMA and the county property administrator. Uh, we had several meetings with the owner and, and with the engineering firm representing the, the owners. They're trying to develop uh, an 80 acre track located on Chapman Road and Lawson Road between the US Highway 90 and Lawson Avenue. Part of this development is in city limits and part of this development is partially in Balverde County. The main concern there is that development is highly affected by a designated FEMA floodway. And one way to reclaim areas affected is to build a drainage improvements to the site. On this image, we have uh, the existing condition of the FEMA flood map dated 2011. <coughs> this is the 
Which lot are they developing? The one that's on Lawson? Is this Lawson? the track where we have the fields? Oh, yeah. That's the one they're going to do. There's yeah. another 20 acre track. And they're, they're proposing to build a detention, a 7.5 acre detention fund here. The, the thing that we're having heartburn with is that this right here, the water don't run through there. <laughs> the water runs straight through here. Yeah. It runs through through here and through over here, through Bowers and Property, mm -hmm. crosses here, goes down, and it comes through here. And this one runs that way. If they follow this map, where they want to put the retention system, they won't do you any good. Right here, if, they, if this map was correct, the system would be perfect. The problem is that this map's not right. He's taking elevation. Yeah, I'm going to say that. Uh, he's taking elevation. Uh, been out there walking mm -hmm. it shot grades. Shot grades for, and he works for Abner, I believe, also, right? He didn't work for Abner. Mm -hmm. So all this has been, he's done all the elevation before he worked for it. Okay, so on, on this image we have uh, the proposed condition. Uh, they're proposing to build a detention bed based on uh, according following to what we, what we have as the designated flow with the 7.5 acres. That's like 800 by 400 detention basin. But uh, the situation here that we have is done on the top part, subdivision. We have a low point here, and it's raining to a 48 easement, rain easement on the southwest corner of the subdivision, and the other portion of the subdivision is flowing through this pool de sac. And then we have a, a earthen channel flowing from east to west, and it ends up on the same spot. Can you change the other? Okay, so I have identified on field and on maps that we have a low point with an elevation of 1030.89 on this 48 grade adjustment, which is receiving all of the subdivision and the upstream north part of the subdivision. And the proposed inlet elevation from their development is 1033. So by the time it starts to fill up, we have like 2.5 kilos. <laughs> I think we've all seen the flooding this year. Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> then it becomes a lake bigger than I'm yeah. damn sometimes. Um, there was an old. The Army Corps of Engineers had done a deal to put a retention system on the back yes. side of. Um, Close to the year. Yeah. It was on the back side of that subdivision. Well, the, 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 yeah. The. I guess when I came in as, as a commissioner in 2011, we spoke to Mondragon's son. And since then, we've had a couple of meetings with the man. Uh, and like I told him, I said, you know, if you if you go above all that, uh, between where the where the park service has their place and 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 down here before the hedges, if, if you go in there and purchase that land, uh, you know, and, and basically. Do a 40 acre retention system in, the, in that property. There is also, uh, and I think we've talked about quite mm -hmm. one, we've talked about a road, the extension of Creek, yeah. yeah. and then, or Kingsway. Uh -huh. And then there's another one uh, where the church is at. Mm -hmm. Wherever that church is at, yeah, it further up. It, uh, further up, there's a <coughs> Curry owns some property in that Curry owns some property and then thanks to uh, God, I can't remember that guy's name, but there's a church, somebody owns property in the Nick one. There's a fifty foot right away through there that goes into the to the big range. If they were to build a retention tank on the north side of that, of that road, then you could use that dirt to build that load up, get it out of the flood zone, and then whatever property is behind that, wherever the school might have been built later on, then you could use that road uh, you could bring out of the floodway. And it would serve the purposes of the hedges, Mondalon, and even some of this ranch would get that benefit. Yeah, because we're fixing to have a we're fixing to have a traffic nightmare right there at Arterita and Highway 90 with the new school. And then this on top of that, we're fixing to have a, no, it's gonna be a lot of not, not just a flooding issue, we're going to have a traffic well, issue. Well, and the thing is, though, that, and I don't want to throw this one out here, but we had the conversation 
Well, water and I have a new one. Can we go back once today? It it comes across. Yes. Uh -huh. yeah. So we have a water crossing here. So all 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 Ita and this area, Sanita Hills, and it's flowing through a floor that's located okay, here and it's going back to the same location. And whatever that one goes, whatever doesn't run through there, you get a bunch of this water here on the yeah. I mean, the, the, so the, 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 the shed area is like all, all of this. I mean, the retention system has got to be above the hedges to, to function, to deal with the drainage issue completely. And, and that deals with the hedges issue. And, and, and the original FEMA deal that was going to be a retention pond up there, and then they were going to divert the water. Go back to that other map that shows the floodplain. That water, the, the retention pond was going to be up on the top, and they were actually going to divert the water where that striped line is around the hedges to deal with that issue of the hedges flooding. That was back from the 98 flood when we did the FEMA study, and that was the original one that was going to be in it for this to work. In my opinion, you're going to have to go back to that original. We've been pushing. Uh, we had a meeting. He submitted his stuff to the team. He, he did all his paperwork. And then got a little buzz. And he, what do you want to do? Let's mean you have a meeting. Then we'll go down to the city and let's visit with them because we need to be on the same page. And maybe we're just missing something. Uh, but everybody at the meeting, the three of us at the meeting, needs to be built above the hedges. There's nowhere else to put it. And if he does that, it takes care of the hedges. And take, and that'll take care of all most of this property. Then he can actually build on his property if he goes to that tank up here above the hedges. No, no, it'll work. And then if we improve the, the culvert side there along Lawson to deal with that additional. I asked God let's put it on the agenda so we can get a recommendation from the court because we'd like to send a letter telling them that we don't believe what he, what his plan is, is going to work for us. It's going to work, period. But well, I, I think we're going to wind up with the same issue we have across the road. That, we, that was created over there with the construction of the facility that flooded everybody else now. But this is going to compound a whole lot of people. Yeah, There's no way you can get that drainage deal to work on this other side. Dude. You just can't do it. And it's just not going to work. This tank here, by the time it fills up, we've got another two and a half pretty little water in the house. Where did this come from? That's FEMA. That's FEMA. I guarantee you that was because that's. The design after 98 when FEMA came in with the, the retention pond no, on the north just... and the diversion of that, that's what that is. That was that was where the retention ponds are going to be and we're going to divert the water around the hedges and come back in like you have it there on the stripe. But that was the original deal. That, and, and then that opens up, of course, a lot of areas. It, it deals with flooding issues for the whole community. It opens up property for development. Then at that point, I guess we all have a conversation about what we want to do there. But, you know. If you build a tank up on top, uh, then you could actually, that one easement that goes across, <coughs> that easement from the highway that goes mm -hmm. to the big ranch, you could build a perimeter across this, and actually that would be your dam for the tank. And then you could use the road for everything going back to the bigger ranch. And if, if we, at some point, we need to get traffic from the north side out to the loop. So either Arborita, King, one of these areas needs to extend all the way over so that we can divert traffic in that direction. I, mean, I, I agree with you, Judge, that, that that's what needs to be done. I don't think this other part is going to work. I think it's just going to compound the problem. It's going to, it's going to make the problem a lot worse. Before we take off on anything, uh, we wanted to, uh, hey, how y'all doing? Yeah, how are you? Oh, I got better, couldn't take it. <laughs> Until you walked in. <laughs> uh, I think, again, what we need from the court is we want to send a letter basically telling them that the plans that they presented, we just to make sure everybody's on the same page. What they presented to us, we do not believe is going to work. Now, the city, I think, is going to send their own letter. Uh, but again, where they're going to put the tank, and, and is outside of the city limits. And again, it's not going to help. You're going to be getting tons of phone calls uh, because it will hurt the head. We're the floodplain manager for the county. Yes. Is the city floodplain manager inside or they, still are? They do have a floodplain manager. The city engineer. Have we 
sent this to the Army Corps of Engineers or FEMA for review. They sent it to FEMA. Mm -hmm. They, they sent it to FEMA as what they, re what they recommend. They being the owners have sent it to FEMA. And did we get now we're doing it well, but we're going to do a res we want to do a response before they took off because what we're looking at, it won't work. We need to get our two cents in there before. So I'll, I'll make a motion that we authorize the judge to write a letter to write it to FEMA or Marshall. Okay, okay from, uh, I authorize Carlos to write a letter to FEMA and to the property owner that the plan that this. they have submitted. Uh, that they have submitted, we don't believe will will work the way it needs to be. Second, I have a motion for Mr. Nelson, second for Mr. Vasquez. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Five zero vote. Item twenty seven, we already did. Uh, item twenty eight, discussion possible action. <coughs> road, Rich Boner Lane, asking permission to perform survey and lease and balance on portion of the road encroaching property. This one here, uh, I bought 23 acres. I visited with uh, council yesterday. I bought 23 acres in South Del Rio. Uh, the county has ate up a big portion, well, a little bit, and I say good portion. <laughs> <laughs> Pretty good chunk of the property on where the road goes through. So if the court uh, would allow uh, Godless to go out, shoot some grades, make sure that Basically, I'm going, to, I'm going to give the county a little portion of the property. That way, the road doesn't have to be moved. I'll make a motion to authorize Carlos to take a survey and set the meets and bounds. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton, second Commissioner Wardlow. All those in favor? Uh -huh. Four zero vote, one abstention. Uh, Judge. <coughs> yes, sir. We go back to this because I got one more question on this. On item 26? Yeah. Uh, yeah. Okay. Um, as part of this, development, are they going to require the developer to enhance those culverts along Lawson or not? I understand that's the city park, probably not the county park. Lawson is county. Yeah, the road's the county, but the project sits in the city. The project sits in the city. What we had plans mm -hmm. was to, to, do mm -hmm. the, to do Lawson, mm -hmm. but it doesn't do any good to do Lawson if he doesn't do yeah, 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 yeah. Lawson. So that's what we were going. That's what we were asking him to do before. So Commissioner Vasquez was going to approve those. We're, okay. right. I have plans for the one on Lawson, and I have estimated okay. price on that one also. Okay, that's all I have. Okay. Uh, the 28 item 29 of Pinkman, Michigan, to Valverde County and Jay Gonzalez for border pit battle. Motion to approve. Second. I have a motion, Commissioner Nettleton, second Commissioner Flores. All those in favor? Aye. Aye, five zero vote. What is the board of pit battle? They're having a cook off Edgar. Yes, sir. Explain border pit battle. Uh, it's just their first time in cook off with DJ 394.1. Uh, they will be having a live band at the new band. I'm not, I think they're local bands. Uh, yeah, it's going to be about four or five bands. Any other questions? No. We're good. We already took the vote. First paragraph, project update. <coughs> I, I think uh, on the building, like you said probably <coughs> on the horse stalls, uh, which are welding, Edgar, probably this week or next week will be done. Yeah, I think the, the remaining of the welding should be done uh, before the end of the week. Uh, unless something else, you know, unfortunately comes up for the... Um, I think by the beginning of next week, we should start carrying on the whole group. Okay. And then start putting up the third. And, 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 and when he says welding, it's it's on the actual pins themselves. Uh, they've been cleaning them up and the rotted part on the bottom, they've been take, taking care of that and fixing that. Uh, purlin and purlin clips already have, right, Jim? Yes. Yes. Right? Already Where are we at on the two? Sir? Where are we at on the two? For the uh, metal, they're closed today at uh, 2, 2 p.m. in. Uh, we received two bits on that. I haven't checked on the aluminum for that much, but that one closes today as well. Okay. Uh, two and three. I forget which one. For those two will close. But we did receive some stuff, some hurling for Edgar. From the and, and all this is done with, uh, again, the court had set aside the $940,000 dollars out of the one point some odd million dollars that we had for that, that site. So all this is done with uh, insurance money. 
Um, <clears throat> maybe uh, on the next program, let's put an item on the agenda so we can do a, an update. And I was trying to think of how to get it in this one, but I couldn't figure out a way right now. Uh, on the other buildings, because I know y'all had an issue with 8363 with the insurance people. Okay. Yes. So if we can put it on. Okay. <laughs> we'll get it, please. Is that it, Edgar, on the updates? Uh, yes, sir. Next time, question. Do I have any other questions on this? No. Good. Matt, on the insurance money, where is it in this audit report, this fund balance report? Did you, is it all together on the county budget? Okay. Point four minutes to point five? It would be. So now, it's all combined? It is all combined. However, if you go below that and you dig into your 200 page report on your budgets, it's yeah, yeah, broken you gotta, out. You got to broke out, but I was right. trying to. That is, this is a... So this is all insurance money? That is all insurance money. It's consolidated from that report, yes. That doesn't include anything but insurance money? Correct. Would you mind adding the word insurance here just for a moment? Under counting projects? Yes. Okay, but that's counting projects. That's, well, that's what I was asking. Is all of that money insurance money? Or is well, it is now, but normally we do have other projects going on at the same time. Could, could you could you add it? For now, sure. just to make sure. Or do you want to create a whole other fund for other projects that come up? Right. Well, if we're going to have, I guess the, the because whole thing this would this be money will go separate. away, and that's that's the county project fund. The money will go yeah. away at some time. Okay. So can you make can you make sure that when I when I look at it, or any of the commissioners look at it, that it that I know exactly that it's insurance money. I'd like to see the insurance money separate so that I can track the and, and you can. If, if, if you look in, in this report, this report will show what's broken up. No, I understand. It's broken up by department, just like the general fund, which contains many, many, many departments. I understand. Okay. I was just looking for a simpler place to put it, but I will go through the whole entire report because I have nothing better to do. Okay. Matt? Yes. On this one here where it says county projects? Yes. Would you please put insurance on that? I can. All insurance on For now, yeah. but I will. Yeah. Okay. Thank you, sir. Uh, item 31, closed session, consultation pursuant to Texas Government Code A, 551.071, parenthesis 2, attorney client privilege. B, 551.071, parenthesis 1, parenthesis A, contemplated litigation. We'll take a little five minute break and then folks, if y'all will give us the room, we'll go into executive session. We good? Okay. Court's now back in session. We've got a couple of items to go back to. Uh, one of them is number 19, discussion possible action on SC Ranch. Judge, I'll make a motion to authorize you to sign forms 8283. Have a motion, Commissioner Nelson. Second, second, Judge. Thanks, Commissioner Vasquez. All those in favor? All right. All five zero vote. Uh, let's see. We got one more we talked about. Okay, item 24. We didn't talk about funds. We actually talked about uh, a process. We could, uh, there's money in building maintenance. Uh, and then if they get short at some point, we can always go back that way. How much is in the Broadway fund now? We used it all the other day for carpet. For the oh, <laughs> so we could take the, I would recommend do the 6200. And this needs to get done this physical year? The painting? Yeah. yeah it's yeah. pretty nasty. We're, we're waiting on the painting to do the flooring. Yeah. Or building maintenance, isn't it? <clears throat> so what fund? I would say uh, building maintenance. Okay. Oh. Amend my motion to authorize the funds to come out of the maintenance. So it can accept uh, 6200 in case it goes to 6200. Up to 6200. I have a motion, amended motion from Commissioner Nettleton and Commissioner Flores accepted. All those in favor? All right. All right. Five zero vote. I'm good. Thank you. Commissioner's comments? County judges' comments. Uh, we need to adjourn. Thank y'all.